Ah, tomato, tomato. To refrigerate or not to refrigerate. Loads of research has found that putting your tomatoes in the fridge reduces their flavour by reducing the amount of volatiles they produce. These are the odours which you detect through your sense of smell, your olfactory system, which senses the tomato's volatile chemicals around here, at the top and back of your nose, underneath your brain. Volatiles, along with sugars and acids, give tomatoes their classic tomatoey, grassy, green, fruity aromas, so without them, they taste a bit unfresh and meh. This happens because the cold affects the activity of some of the tomato's genes, which contain the code to make the enzymes involved in making the volatile chemicals. You can think of it a bit like a factory production line, which has been slowed down or turned off at the first stage. However, as long as you don't keep your tomatoes in the fridge for more than around six days, you can take them out to warm them up in your kitchen, and after a day, some of those genes will kick back into action and start producing volatiles again. So for the best taste, you should probably store your tomatoes outside the fridge. But if you want to keep them fresh for longer than a few days, put them inside the fridge. Bananas emit ethylene gas, the plant hormone made inside all of the land plants that we eat. Ethylene triggers loads of growth and development throughout a plant's life cycle, from seed sprouting to leaf growth, fruiting, and importantly, ripening. In ripening, ethylene helps break down parts of the fruit cell walls to make them softer, and it helps convert starches to sugars, making the fruit sweeter. So because bananas release ethylene gas into their surroundings, if you store them with unripe fruit, the ethylene will kickstart their ripening. And because ethylene production works on a sort of loop, the unripe fruit itself will also start producing its own ethylene, giving an even stronger boost to the ripening chemical reactions. Supermarket fruit producers kind of do the same thing. They'll expose fruits to doses of ethylene right before it goes on the shelves so that it's ripe and ready to go. Bananas aren't the only ethylene culprit though. Lots of fruits like apples, pears, avocados and kiwis are big ethylene producers and are susceptible to its ripening effects. On the other hand, fruits such as blueberries and citrus fruits haven't evolved to produce much ethylene during the ripening process and so aren't as sensitive to it. So bear this in mind when you're organising your fruit in your fridge or your fruit bowl. Potatoes. The fridge is not a good place to store your potatoes because of two important reactions that take place in the cells of the potatoes involving sugar. Number one, starch, a carbohydrate, is broken down into glucose, a sugar. And two, glucose is broken down to release energy and build protein and cell walls in a process called respiration. When you bake, roast or fry potatoes, their sugars react with their amino acids in the Maillard reaction, the most delicious reaction we know, which gives golden brown food its classically wholesome flavour. But the problem with keeping your potatoes in the fridge is the cold slows down one of those two key reactions, respiration. This means that the potato makes more sugar than it breaks down. If you then fry it at a higher temperature, it browns more than normal and produces more of the chemical acrylamide as a byproduct of the Maillard reaction. Acrylamide is potentially dangerous if you eat a lot of it over your lifetime, although so far this has only really been found to be true in rodents and not humans. It doesn't really matter whether or not eggs are refrigerated, what counts is that you don't keep warming and cooling them. Cold eggs left out at room temperature can get coated in condensation, giving a nice, moist surface for bacteria to thrive on, which increases the chance that bacteria will make its way through the shell into the egg. Interestingly, most hens in the UK are vaccinated against salmonella, but hens in the USA aren't. To lower the risk of this bacterial infection, eggs in the USA are washed and sprayed with antibacterials before they go to the supermarket. But because UK eggs aren't washed and sprayed, they depend more on the mother hen's vaccination and on limiting condensation to prevent salmonella bacteria entering the egg. That's why eggs aren't refrigerated in UK supermarkets, so that condensation won't build up as the egg cools when you transport it from shop to home. Lots of fridges have a handy egg holder in the door, but you shouldn't really leave them there because that's where the temperature fluctuates the most. You might know that reheating cooked rice can give you food poisoning due to toxins released by the bacterium Bacillus cereus. Some of the Bacillus spores, which are like seeds ready to sprout, can survive cooking up to and including 100 degrees Celsius. If you then leave the rice set out in your kitchen for more than an hour or two, these spores will germinate into the dangerous bacterium stage of their life cycle and release the toxin into your rice. Even if you reheat the rice, the toxin isn't destroyed, which is why it's so important that you don't leave your rice sat out of the fridge long enough for the Bacillus spores to germinate. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to support what the RI does, you can do that on Patreon.